Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video I'm going to clean up this PlayStation 2. I got it from a thrift store and I haven't even powered this thing on. I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to clean it out. Because there are a few filters at the front that are looking a little bit crusty here and there. Now I'm hoping that there isn't any disc inside of it. Oh, I Notice that there's a corner missing over here. So that's very unfortunate. So let's put this all aside. Let's grab my broken but still trustworthy tool kit. And now I assume that these screws are underneath these pads. Oh, they are not sticky pads. So that's very nice. These pads are always the point of no return. Once you remove them, they won't stick back properly. But these are just push in pads, which is a really cool and really nice attention to detail. So let's get a Phillips screw ahead and let's, oh. Let's take this apart. Now I do think that it uses the same audio video out as the PlayStation 2 Slim. Ah, it does use self tappers, so we'll just have to take a little bit of extra care when we are screwing them back in. So as I said, I think it uses the, well I think, I'm sure it uses the same audio video uh, plug as the, as the PlayStation 2 Slim. So I can just test it rather easily. Oh, these are shorter. Okay. So is this one a longer screw then? Yeah, so two longer ones and two shorter ones. All right. I think I can remember that. So let's put this all aside and let's actually open the expansion bay. Cover. Not sure if that is, is to be taken out, but I guess it is since it's outside of since I've detached it. So ah, over there you can see the little mesh filter. Well, this is quite an weird looking port actually. It's full of dust, as the uh, as is the fan too. Not sure what this little hole is. I guess we'll just see it. Oh, and there's a sticker on the side of this thing. So the console has never been opened before, and we need to open it to clean it. Now. And to cut it like this so it stops and then I'm going to cut it like this so it stops and then This PlayStation 2 hasn't got any warranty anymore. There are two over here as well. Uh, I think I do, yeah, I do need to remove those. There's another one up here. And another one down here. Somebody has tried to open this up because this little tap is broken, or I just broke it. That's also a possibility. Now, I assume that this is also a high, a long screw. Yeah, this. And they feel very fragile while unscrewing them. So, and these are then. 
two shorter screws, I suppose. Yeah. Alright, so I guess yeah there you go. That we should able should be able to remove this, hopefully. Hopefully without breaking it. Ah! Oh! What? Okay. So it's the top that comes off. Wasn't expecting that. Really nice that they included a sticker to prevent this thing from tearing apart. But can we also... Remove the front panel connectors or front panel buttons yes I think we can yeah there you go so we've got the front cover off and I think that there is no disc inside of the tray so let's put this aside and oh wow very really interesting design actually so, let's put the screws aside as well. And, well, let's actually just start to unscrew things. So, maybe this drive is also kind of loosey-goosey. So, now, I have never taken apart a PlayStation 2, but there is a clip on here. We need to move that a little. So this is a uh, a first for me, quite an adventure. Yeah, there you go. So is there a clip at the bottom as well? Uh, no, there isn't. So I think that we just should be able to. Oh, we need to remove the, the assembly at the back first. So, unscrew these three screws, two screws, two screws. And then we can remove, we can possibly remove the CD drive. It's actually a DVD drive, not a CD drive. So, remove the, I'm able to remove it. So let's try to wiggle out this whole back plate. Ah, ah if we remove these screws the bottom cover will pop off I suppose. So let's detach this and clip it from the flat flex cable. And let's turn this over and actually lift it up. There you go. So, ah, that's really dirty. But I'm hoping, there we go, that we can. Oh, it went back into, into its clip. It's the 
flex cable, I think. That's preventing us from moving it along. So well, there are a couple of flat flex cables actually. And they aren't positioned in a rather convenient place. Let's remove this. Because so we can just So there is one over here and there's one over there. Now this one the other is quite a challenge. And I think we need to tackle that from the underside. Well, let's push that back in place and let's why is everything so tightly packed the real place is behind this cover so there are a few screws holding the cover down I see one over there I think that's the only one. That might be the only one. Oh, we can we can remove one of the ribbon cables from the side over here. If my tool allows it. Okay. Sliding flat flex cable, not a push to or a uh, flip. So you've got those flip things that you need to flip it open before you can uh, remove the cable and you've got a slider that you need to slide back in order to remove the cable. This was a slider. So let's remove this screw and let's remove this screw and these... So, but yeah, those two. Those three. Can I see another one? Again, over here. Oh, that's a uh, very tiny screw. Now I want to check the mainboard for leaking capacitors, and so so. That's the main reason for me opening this thing up. There's one over here. All right, so we'll catch that one later. And one in the middle. Hoping that our screwdriver is able to reach it. Yes. Now I do think that I also need to unscrew this board. amazes me how big the power supply assembly is. I mean the, the actual PlayStation 2 is just a small board and this is actually quite a big board. So how does this get... oh just pull it, okay nice. Yeah as I said this is the power supply module on Nishikon cap so yeah. Those are the good ones. So I assume that these are Nishikon, yeah. Oh, the board is labeled Nishikon. 
Nichicon Japan over here. So presumably Nichicon designed this power supply. Which is rather interesting because I didn't know that Nichicon actually designed circuitry. I thought they only designed uh, capacitors and such. So there you go. So why oh, we can uh, remove this plastic separator board, this isolation module, or module. Let's remove this tiny fan connector. Ah, there are a few uh, more screws we need to unscrew before we can start taking off these covers. And I need to switch to a smaller bit. One step bigger, I guess. This one, so this should be the assembly, I guess, it does want to move, but I'm not really sure what actually needs to move, ah, we do need to take out these screws as well. Since these screws screw into the rather strange connector at the back. And I think that it should now come apart nicely. I hope that it should that it comes apart nicely. Yes. Yes, there you go. So a heat pad. Ah, that's the power regulator chip, I assume. So nothing much on here, yeah. Proprietary PlayStation chip, presumably. Sony Computer Entertainment Inc. Tension replace IC link as marked 2002. Let's see if we can find any sign of wave soldering. I don't think it's wave soldered. Oh, we do see a few diodes that are a bit. Uh, laid down on I doing style so but I was actually expecting the top to come off as well but I assumed that that is held down by the thermal compound of the heatsink elements. Well, I believe that this is the region lock switch or the region lock chip but I'm not sure. Rather interesting that they they had broken out a whole bus over there. Uh, Unpopulate connector Oh 
pretty interesting to look at these old electronics. Oh, there's the missing screw. Oh, wow. That was actually quite easy. I was expecting it to um, be a lot more of a battle. Just give it a good pull and it's there. Well, there are no need to replace any uh, thermal compound over here. Sony Computer Entertainment Inc. The Emotion Engine. I must say this is one of the most beautiful chips that I've seen. Including these presumably DRAM modules. Oh, there's something written on there. Wow, this is beautiful. The whole PCB is just one beautiful piece of assembly. DC to DC converters. Wow. Impressive. This really was a top notch console back then. And, you know, it isn't actually that big. It's the. the the bulk is in the power supply and the CD DVD ROM, so that's uh, very unfortunate. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to connect a static thing to this board so we can vacuum it out safely. So the board has been grounded, and let's clean it out a little. Let's use some alcohol to clean the rest of the board. I'm going to use a microfiber towel.
So the top side, I guess, of the PCB has been cleaned up. Now the bottom side is actually very clean. And I do not need to do anything on this side. But I do need to remove some of the dust from around the connectors here and there. So Alright, so let's assemble this unit back together.
So let's power it on. And we see that a red light has come on. It still works. So I think that that will conclude this episode. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh hey hello, uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well if you want you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.